Today we're checking out the Cloud Vocal iSolo, which is one of the easiest and most authentic ways to amplify your acoustic instrument. They have a few different versions, so what I've got here is the latest iteration of, of the violin kit. I also have the acoustic guitar uh, system, which just works really well. It's easy and you can use it, you know, as your entire rig if you just need a very simple full nice sounding acoustic guitar sound or if you want to use it with more effects this is kind of the center piece of your entire rig it works obviously the same with the violin version uh, and they also have a version for woodwinds like saxophone clarinet and stuff like that if you want to read more about the cloud vocal i solo kit check out the link in the description you can buy it on amazon or you can actually get it directly from their website as well So what exactly is the iSolo system? It is a lot of things. First off, it's a very clean sounding condenser microphone. Clean, authentic, full. Uh, it's a beautiful sound, and depending on where you place it on your instrument, as you saw earlier, I had it on the bass port, which is the kind of sound that I like. Um, you can also put it a little bit higher up here, um, and then vice versa on the treble side of the instrument. You're gonna get different sounds, so depending on the type of violin that you have and the style of music that you're playing, you'll definitely want to experiment with that. We'll get a chance to listen a little bit further on in the video, which, by the way, it's probably going to be pretty long, so check out the timestamps in the description if you're just looking for a specific answer to a question that you might have. It is a combination microphone. Uh, it also has a piezo pickup input, so on uh, you know a very loud stage in a, the worst case scenario where the microphone's not really working, you have sort of a feedback issue. It does come with a piezo element you can just plug in, it's going to bypass the microphone and yeah, it's a piezo sound, that's what we're trying to avoid, right? But uh, at least you have something that's going to amplify you and you won't have to worry about feedback that way. From here, your signal's transmitted wirelessly to the floor unit. There's nothing worse than stepping on a cable while you're playing and having the instrument ripped out of your hand or, or pull the output jack out of it. Uh, and so I really love going wireless when I'm playing instruments uh, like this, especially very expensive acoustic instrument. On the floor unit, it has a secondary input, so you could actually blend the microphone from the transmitter along with maybe a built-in uh, pickup that you might have. So this is the Fishman V200. Uh, it's not built into the violin, but it is semi-permanently installed. I leave it on all the time, basically, and this is what I've been using for the last few years. I will compare this to the piezo in the iSolo and also the microphone, just to give you an idea of how much better a microphone sounds than a piezo pickup. In the transmitter, this is where things get really useful. We have first off a, a two band equalizer here. Both the bass and the treble controls here are shelf EQs, which means that they affect frequencies above or below uh, the specific number that it's set at. So for example, the bass control, which is set at 200 hertz, that's a great number for violin. You can boost it, you're gonna get a lot more body and much more full sound, but you might hear a little bit more bow noise. So depending on, again, what kind of music you're playing, it might make sense to boost or cut that. That 200 hertz, as you boost it, it's gonna bring everything below 200 hertz up as well, and vice versa. If you cut that bass control, it's gonna bring down everything below 200 hertz. The treble knob is set at 2K, which is great for clarity and presence. However, um, in some situations, you might find it to be a little bit brittle, sticks out too much. So maybe if you're kind of doing something that's more in the background, like a string pad sort of sound, turn down the treble a little bit uh, and it'll, it'll blend you in the mix a lot better.
over on the right side of the floor unit, we have the effects section. So we have eight different algorithms to choose from, uh, from different types of reverb to delay and pitch shifting. This can be a really useful thing. They're all kind of designed to work for violin specifically. And then just down below here, we have a simple blend control that goes from D to W, which if you don't know, stands for dry and wet. The dry sound is gonna be a completely unaffected sound. So if you don't want effects at all, no worries, just keep that completely counterclockwise. Uh, but if you do want a little bit of reverb or delay, you can just blend that in to taste up towards the W, which is wet, which is the, uh, the affected sound, the reverb or the delay. Uh, and then to go along with that, we also have a small knob here right at the bottom that says parameter. And depending on which algorithm you set it to, like one is a room reverb, a small room, two is a concert hall, three might be a plate or something. The parameter is gonna change maybe the decay value. Once you get into the delay settings further on, this is actually gonna set the amount of time in between the repeats. Is it a quick slapback sort of repeat or a longer uh, delay, which sounds better for like a solo or something. I'm gonna keep the mix parameter set relatively high so you can actually hear what it sounds like, but ideally you'll probably want to dial them back. The final two knobs on the floor unit have to deal with gain staging in addition to the auxiliary gain control here uh, and a three-step switch on the transmitter. This gets a little bit complicated. It deals with gain staging, but to boil it all down, essentially what you need to know is that you want to send as much signal as possible earlier in the chain rather than later because it does pick up a little bit of noise along the way. And if you sent a very low signal here, the signal to noise ratio, right, there's going to be less actual violin compared to uh, the hiss that might be picked up along the way that's inherent with some wireless kits and poor cables, etc. Um, so the idea is that you would send more volume here so you don't have to boost it all later. If you send a quiet signal and you have to boost it later, you're also boosting the noise that it has picked up along the way. So a three-step switch here. I found that on the high setting, the double stops and playing really loudly tends to distort. So for me, I've been leaving it at the medium gain setting. If you're a very loud player or if you're on a really loud stage, maybe set that to the lowest one. Uh, and then you'll set the gain control here for the wireless kit. If you're using a secondary pickup, blend it in here, set the gain control for the auxiliary input, and then finally the master volume, that's your output. That's the order that you wanna work. So transmitter, gain, master volume. A few other things here. I wanted to note that the antenna does detach so it can collapse and just be, you know, it's gonna fit in the violin case really easily. Here's your size reference. Uh, we do have a few extra ins and outs here. So if you're gonna use this with other cloud vocal kits, you'll wanna connect them just to make sure they're not interfering with each other. So you'll connect essentially what is a headphone cable from the sync out to the sync in of the next device. Uh, and all that does is transmit a little bit of information just to make sure that they're on separate frequencies and not uh, cross talking. On the side here, we have the power input for the stage receiver, uh, which is nine volt center tip negative DC current. What that means is that you can use it with the included power supply that it came with, or if you're like me and have a billion wall wart adapters for other guitar pedals sitting around, this is the standard type of current and um, voltage that all other guitar pedals pretty much work on. Of course, you could also just use the power supply that comes with it, which they've included. Edison, you know, North American 110 or 120 volt adapters, uh, or also the UK style or European style adapters. 
On the bottom, we have an auxiliary input. So this is gonna be a headphone style jack. If you wanted to play a backing track from a computer or a phone, super simple to set up there. And then you would control the volume from that separate device. So if you're someone that you know maybe busks or, or plays remotely, or you just want a very simple setup, everything coming through one line, that would be a great way to do it. You can play a backing track from your phone, uh, set the volume on your phone, and then play along with it. Everything's gonna come out the single output going to whatever amplification device you have. We also have the ability to add in an external mute switch. Uh, if you wanted to, that would just be an easy way to mute the signal if you have to turn the microphone off or change instruments or something, or you're having a conversation on stage that you don't wanna be picked up by the violin right next to your face. Uh, but of course, you could also just drop down and switch the master control all the way to minimum, and that'll cut the signal completely as well. The transmitter attaches to your violin with a sort of chin rest style attachment, though instead of needing some weird like spindly tool to attach it. Uh, it actually just has a thumb screw, which honestly makes a lot more sense. Uh, it does have cork on it to pad it, so it's not going to affect the finish of your instrument. It's not going to damage it in any way. And then once you get this set up, you can actually just leave it on and just uh, take the transmitter off as needed. It just attaches there with Velcro, essentially. The transmitter is powered with a lithium battery and is good for anywhere from five to seven hours of battery life, depending on what gain setting you're using it on. That's more than enough for a gig. I would charge it after every gig, I think, because lithium batteries tend to lose a little bit of charge as they sit in your violin case over the course of a week. The range of the unit is about a 50 foot radius. And again, you just wanna maintain that line of sight. You can totally go further than that and it's gonna work fine uh, in my experience anyway, but 50 feet is about the safe distance. If you wanna go further than that, engage the range boost. It'll give you up to a hundred foot radius um, at the expense of a little bit of extra latency. So at the lower setting, 50 feet, you're only experiencing about 10 milliseconds of latency, which I don't think anyone on this planet can really notice. Uh, and if you engage that, it's gonna bump it up to 20, which again is still a very small number. Last thing I'm gonna mention, and thanks again for sticking with me through the technical uh, section of the video. I know it was very long. The direct output here, you can use it in two ways. So. Uh, the first way, turn the signal down a little bit so you're getting an instrument level signal and you can use it with just a standard instrument cable here, like a guitar style cable or what you would normally use with a pickup on, on your violin, whatever you've got. Um, this would be the application if you want to use this as the, you know, the first piece in your rig to send on to some other pedals. Maybe you have a reverb or delay that you like uh, or a volume pedal, for example. You'll want to set this to a lower output and use a standard TS cable here. Or if this is literally your entire rig and this is the first and last piece of it and you just wanna send the, the signal onto front of house, onto an amplification device, you're gonna to wanna to use a balanced connection. So turn up this master volume to a higher level. And the kit, in addition to that instrument cable, also includes this kind of unique one that goes from a TRS jack, three connections, to an XLR, and this is what you'll use to connect to the front of house system. It's gonna provide a balanced connection. It's much less likely to pick up noise along the way until it reaches the console. Uh, and so that's the solution if you're just using this as an all-in-one rig. With that all out of the way, let's take a listen to what the microphone actually sounds like. I'm not an amazing violinist, but I do know a lot of technical things. Um, so they had sent me the product just to make a quick demo. First thing I wanna do is just set up the microphone in a few different places around the violin so you can hear how it sounds different. Up next, let's take a listen to the included piezo element. This is for the worst case scenario, if you're on a loud stage, maybe with an inexperienced sound engineer, or you really just don't have any control over that to begin with, and you're starting to experience feedback from the microphone, which is a very real thing, simply plug in the piezo pickup there. It's gonna bypass the microphone. You're still using the wireless transmitter. Now you just take the transducer and wedge it into the bridge of your instrument, and this is the sound you're gonna get. Again, a piezo pickup does not sound good, but sometimes that's just what you need to cut through in a mix or in a situation where feedback is a major issue. Let's compare it briefly to the Fishman V200, which is a very common type of pickup. Just so you can hear, you know, as far as piezo pickups go, this is a decent one.
So there it is, my demo walkthrough. Thanks for sticking through it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave me a comment in the description. I'm pretty good at getting back to people. Uh, if you want to read more about it or consider purchasing it, there is a link in the description. That's an affiliate link, so I'm going to get a small commission that goes to help fund the channel uh, and the types of demos that I do for the community here. Um, it doesn't cost anything extra, but it does go a long way to supporting me, and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.